uh, okay, as we always mention that anybody who is like, if you had to leave the class or if there is any reason you are not attending the live lecture, you still can always go for the recorded one. And let us start by talking about uh, the themes in the play. Now, I, I know that you are aware of how to write about a, uh, a certain theme in a story, whether it is a short story or a novel, like what we will be doing in Old Man and the Sea. We will be studying Old Man and the Sea as a novel. Uh, the way you develop your ideas concerning the theme is very straightforward. We will be talking about it in a minute. But now this part is mainly about Shakespeare. You can never write about one of the themes that Shakespeare talk about in his plays without mentioning his philosophy, his literary tools, his way of presenting the, uh, the story, his way of picturing his characters. And of course, the messages or the lessons that he wanted to send us all. And I always tell you that Shakespeare writes about the human characteristics all over the world, ever since the dawn of, of humanity, ever since people were created on Earth, until the last day, people share in common certain uh, traits, like uh, um, love, uh, treason, like uh, hate, like, you know, ambition, like uh, greed, like hesitation. All of these are characteristics of humans in general. Okay, so what is the theme of Shakespeare's plays? We can always say that Shakespeare was a prolific writer during the Elizabethan and Jacobian ages of British theater. He is also known as the English Renaissance of the early modern period. So Shakespeare is a poet and drama writer. He's, he never wrote a novel. At that time, the Elizabethan and the Jacobian ages were the rich ages for theater. It was the only means of, of entertainment. Besides, of course, to have a joker around. The joker is, um, is you can say, is the old version of having comedy. The stand-up comedy, the comic shows, all what you see now, driven from the idea of having a joker in the royal court. So this to give you a, a bit of a back, background on the literature at that time. So Shakespeare's plays fall into three genres. And I want you please to focus on the three genres, tragedies, comedies, and histories. So he wrote a couple of plays related to the history of uh, kings and uh, different, uh, you know, kings and queens and so on. And comedies, and I spoke about it before, a comedy, uh, uh, not necessarily in a funny way, in a way that will make you laugh, but a comedy meaning it ended lightly, with no tragedies, with no killing, with no punishment, severe punishments with romance, some of them with romance, like the Romeo and Juliet is purely um, uh, romance. However, it is ended in, uh, we can never say it's a comedy because it ended in the suicide of the hero and the heroine. So uh, you can also think of the tragedies are all the heavy uh, plays that ended in uh, death or catastrophe. Some of the most common themes, and here is an important piece to look at, what does Shakespeare write about in general? What was his main concern? So he wrote about love, power, politics, betrayal, identity, revenge, appearance versus reality, fate, and how is fate doing miraculous things, and free will, and madness and sanity. Madness and sanity absolutely can be depicted in Hamlet and many other characters in different plays too. 
The free will is, is also related to uh, many stories where the people are uh, looking for liberation, looking for getting even, just like Caliber in our uh, play, The Tempest, it, it all reveals about the free will, whether to uh, accept being occupied or to rebel and try to liberate your country, which is really important theme that we uh, found the connection with our modern life. So Shakespeare's plays give us the greatest sense of the value of human life, of how people live, and how people love, and the importance of human relationships than any other writer of his time. Shakespeare waves the theme of treason throughout the Tempest. Now, if we want to talk about the betrayal, the treason, mainly look at the Tempest. If you want to talk mainly about the vanity, how people, you know, sometimes some people love to be flattered. Some people love to be battered. Like, you know, um, you tell them, oh, how nice you are, how great you are, and all of that. The best play ever to depict this is the King Lear. King Lear is also uh, talking about the ingrateful uh, daughters, the ingratitude of human beings. He dealt with the parent-children relationship. So it's again, uh, each, each play focuses on a major one. So in The Tempest, we focus on treason. The first instance of treason occurred in the play's uh, prehistory. Remember when we talk about something that is done in fl fl flashback? When Antonio conspired with King uh, Alonso, and associate Prospero and succeed him as the new Duke, Duke of Milan. So the events are happening in Italy. It's important to mention the setting. So don't forget to write about the setting. You will have questions related to what, are, what makes the components, the elements of uh, the, the play. One of them is the setting. Where is the setting? It is happening in... Uh, an island around Milan or Italy. The attempt to kill Prospero was both political treason and brotherly betrayal. So he's dealing with treason, and I want you to focus uh, the two aspects. The aspect of when your kinsmen, your bl blood, your family, somebody from your family just betrayed you, which is really hard and severe for the emotional uh, human beings when they feel that they are betrayed from the closest person to them. And another betrayal is the political background. So it's important to mean whenever you have a question related to betrayal, you need to discuss the two sides of betrayal. And also you can add when the, uh, the natives, the Taliban, and the, they wanted to conspire against the Prospero, thinking that he would liber be liberated from Prospero, just like what happened in real life when in the Middle East, the, the, um, the Turkish Empire uh, invaded the Middle East. And when they became like so aggressive and cruel, the uh, inhabitants of the Middle East started to cooperate with the uh, invaders from different countries. As I mentioned before, Britain, France, Italy, they wanted to um, um, take their side in order to get rid of the uh, Turkish Empire. So similarly, you can talk about this aspect in the Tempest. The theme of treason uh, returns in the form of twin assassination plots. Exactly, you need to talk about the two plots. The first plot, with the, which is the treason that happened before the uh, story begins, and the, the, the planned plot that they started to uh, figure out to get rid of Prospero, with the help of Caliban, of course. The first instance of treason um, occurred in the play Prehistory when Antonio conspired with uh, King Alonso to assassinate um, Prospero and succeed him as the new Duke of Milan. Okay, uh, so you can think about Caliban and the Stefan, uh, Stefano plot to kill Prospero. Of course, the Caliban, because he wanted to be 
liberated or to liberate his country. And Stefano, uh, because of course, the old hatred and take control of the island. Antonio and the Sebastian plot to kill Alonso. Again, there is another plot. And take control of Naples, another country. So it's, uh, it's as if they say, okay, that's uh, an opportunity to get rid of them in order to get our ambitions in Naples. Both of these plots get interrupted. So despite these men's treasonous intentions, they ultimately do not real harm. They didn't actually uh, put it into action. That's why this uh, play is not a tragedy because nothing harmful happened. Yes, there was conspiracy. Yes, there was evil that was being planned. However, the good thing is it never happened in real life. The interruption of these assassinations plots does not fully dismantle the theme of treason. So we talk about it in this concern and uh, you need when you mention this um, theme to highlight the different aspects. So whenever I ask you any question related to a, a certain themes in the play, you need to mention whether it is started in the uh, pre uh, history before the play was uh, written. Uh, and you also look at every aspect, every aspect mentioned in the play. Do you have any questions so far? Is this clear? Let me know, please, in the chat box. Any questions? All right, perfect. All right. So uh, let us now, uh, thank you, Yasser, for responding. Uh, let's now have a look at the uh, um, tips in general on how to uh, develop a theme, because as I mentioned, you will have it in the coming exam. So pay attention, please, and take notes in order to be able to, uh, to uh, follow the uh, steps going to share here. Let's have a look at this. Hey everyone, I'm Shailen with Reedsy, and today we're going to be talking about theme and how to incorporate it into a story. Theme is essentially an underlying idea that is expressed throughout a story. It's not explicitly stated, but the characters and events show and explore this idea throughout. It's like an invisible thread that's part of the story, but can be interpreted based on all the other threads. Even though it's not explicitly mentioned, it usually has an impact on the reader whether they pick up on it consciously or not. Theme is usually a statement on the human experience or the human condition. It can be something as simple as an idea, like the idea of loneliness, or it could be something as specific, such as a specific view on the topic, such as loneliness is the one experience that unifies all humans, which is a bit of a dark theme, but also an interesting one to explore. The theme can also be seen as a sort of hypothesis. Theme is a question that the entire book is going to explore and hopefully find some sort of conclusion on it. Theme is also expressed through the analogy of an iceberg in relation to plot. As with an iceberg where you have a bit of the iceberg visible above the water, the majority of the iceberg is actually hidden underneath the surface. With a story, we could see the visible part of the iceberg as being the plot, which is objectively what's happening, the story, which is the events filtered through the character's experience, and then the theme, which is everything sitting underneath the surface. Even though it may not be visible, it is a hugely important part of the story since it's what's driving it and informing it. So for an example, we could look at Lord of the Rings. In Lord of the Rings, the story is that a hobbit is tasked with destroying an all-powerful ring. However, the theme that's sitting under the story is the addictive and corruptive nature of power. Themes are also used over and over. There are endless stories that deal with themes such as love, but it can stay original when paired with unique situations and characters or when viewed from a unique lens. A book can even have multiple themes, or an author will explore one theme across multiple works. So how do you work theme into your story? 
It can be really hard to wrap your mind around how to work in an invisible thread since it's not concretely present within the story. So the first way would be to have your theme in mind from the very beginning. This is how some authors begin their works. They know what theme they want to explore and they grow the story from that. They create a concept and then plotline that can express their theme, or they create a character who can be challenged by this theme. This way, your entire plotline and entire character arc is constructed based around the theme you want to explore, so it's very integrally rooted into the storytelling. But you also don't have to go in with a predetermined theme. I would say it's almost impossible to go into a story and not have a theme emerge, whether you're consciously trying to or not. Themes kind of just emerge naturally as part of a story. Just because you don't plan it from the start doesn't mean it won't become relevant as you write or you won't realize one that's relevant once you're done. You can use the writing process as an avenue to uncover the theme and kind of figure out what your story is about thematically as you're writing it. Or you don't even really have to pay attention to theme at all. Even if you never really consciously pay attention to theme while you're planning, drafting, or editing, a theme will probably still emerge. It's almost impossible to avoid. Although it might not function as a hypothesis or deep exploration of a theme, it's very hard to avoid themes appearing. The theme is often essentially just the character's arc or the idealistical conflict that the character has to face or overcome. These things exist in pretty much every story, so a theme will kind of just appear. Complex or interesting themes come from complex, interesting characters who interact with their situation in a meaningful way. So if you focus on plot and character, theme will kind of be a natural part of that. So that's an introduction to theme and how to incorporate theme into your writing. If you want to learn more, you can check out the blog post linked in the description, and remember to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thanks so much for watching! I hopefully um, that was clear. There's another piece I wanted to share, just a second. in the Tempest. So at the beginning of the play we have Prospero talking to Miranda about how he was betrayed by his brother Antonio and this is why they are on the island because they were exiled from Milan and this betrayal is what motivates Prospero to get his dukedom back. And of course he succeeds in this and he ends up forgiving his brother for betraying him in the first place. And we also have the theme of betrayal show itself um, at the first half of the play when we have the plots to murder Prospero and Alonso but of course these plots are thwarted because of the loyalty of Ariel and the men and of course um, this loyalty is what stops the betrayal from happening. And we also have Caliban. Now Caliban feels betrayed by Prospero because Caliban is a native to the island whereas Prospero isn't but Prospero rules over him and Caliban feels wronged by this and of course Prospero doesn't show any compassion in this respect. So hopefully you can see how the theme of betrayal is important to understanding the play. Thanks for listening. Hi, this video is going to be on the supernatural in The Tempest. Now, at the beginning of the play, we have Prospero conjuring up the storm, and this is an example of his supernatural abilities. Now, he learned magic himself, so he studied it, and we see him confess to Miranda that it was his obsession with learning it that cost him his dukedom. And this confession also foreshadows him deciding to give up magic at the end of the play. And we also see Prospero 
um, dealing with supernatural powers through Ariel. So Ariel um, is indebted to Prospero and um, Prospero uses Ariel to um, scare the characters at the magical banquet in his spirit form. And we also see the supernatural through Caliban. Now people refer to him in the play as a monster and in part this is because they are racially prejudiced um, but it is also because he is a supernatural being. Now Caliban doesn't have powers but his mother was a witch and he therefore has supernatural blood in him. So hopefully you can see how the supernatural plays itself out in different ways through the different characters. Thanks for listening. was going to be the last one in the Tempest, but I've had a, a request from um, one of my subscribers, Amber Lights, and I certainly hope that name's one of those fake internet names, uh, to talk about the themes and talk about discovery especially. Now, for my overseas viewers, and I know there are lots of those, we have um, in New South Wales here in Australia, we have a particular theme we have to devote to this text, and I'm going to spend the first five minutes or so of this lecture talking about how we analyse discovery in the Tempest is one of its themes. Now normally this wouldn't be a theme, um, so what I'm going to do is also discuss the, the other themes, the more commonly studied themes in the Tempest after I talk about discovery. And I'm going to, for, the, for those people in New South Wales and Australia, I'm going to link those themes back to discovery as well, but for my overseas viewers you might like to skip through the first few minutes if you don't want to discuss discovery as a theme. Now, discovery as a theme is a very artificial concept put on us by the um, syllabus requirements here in New South Wales and we really have it forced upon us and we really need to force discovery into the Tempest as a theme. This benefits us in many ways, although it's a very tight constraint, in that you can't necessarily be wrong because whatever you say that you discovered in the play or you thought about in the play or you linked the theme to it, as long as you've got supporting evidence and some examples to support your view, you can't be wrong and, and because it's been forced upon us, that, that's accepted. I think, and I'll talk about the other themes in the play are, and the ideas are interchangeable of course in, in many ways, but the other themes I'll talk about as we go through are the, the, the sense of the journey, power, ruling, leadership is another idea, freedom as another theme, revenge and probably marry that with forgiveness and reconciliation. I'd love to talk also about love and marriage and magic and the supernatural. Now of course those themes and we wouldn't list themes like that in an essay but I want to talk here today about those themes in particular and show how they interlock and so that when you come to talk about themes, any of the themes, they all link together and they're sort of interchangeable and they mingle and flow and you wouldn't need and you need to think about getting into that what you discover through the play and come up with some of your own ideas about discovery. But they're the basic ones that you could manipulate into it and I think it's important to, to not treat them Uh, okay, Klaus, uh, Mr. Hussein just uh, uh, contacted me now and he, he says he, you must do something on the uh, discussion area. So we're going to have uh, people uh, from the ministry coming to check your participation. So since they cannot see what you uh, respond with me here on the, um, the, the inbox, Let's go to Google Classroom and answer the questions that will be written there. I'm going to stop recording.